In this web lecture, we show you how to use styles in Microsoft Word 2010. What is a style? A style is a set of formatting characteristics, such as font type, font size, font color, paragraph alignment and spacing, etc. By using styles in Microsoft Word, you can quickly and easily choose these characteristics in a consistent way throughout your document. This can save time and avoids the risk of inconsistency if you format the document directly as you go. Here is my Word document. I've got five pages of unformatted text giving information on the University of Manchester. This text is taken from the University of Manchester's Wikipedia page. Currently, this document looks quite boring. The text is simply the default black, Calibri size 11 throughout. By using styles, however, we can format this document consistently and make it look more professional. We can do this using the styles bar, which is located here. And the first thing we need to do is tell Microsoft Word what category each of our text belongs to. So click on the University of Manchester. And if we hover over the different options in the styles bar, Microsoft Word will automatically show us what those options will look like. But the University of Manchester is our title, so we will select title for that one. History is a section, so we select heading one. And origins is a subsection, so we select heading two for that one. Scroll down, this is all normal text, so we don't need to change that. 2004 to present is a subsection as well, so that's heading two. Campus is a section, so heading one. Scroll down. Major projects is a subsection, heading two. The old quadrangle, a subsection. Contact, a subsection. Chances, hotel and conference centre, a subsection, so they're all heading two. Other notable buildings is also a subsection, so that's also heading two. So we have labelled all the sections and subsections. We can also add a numbered list to the two parts of a campus by simply selecting them and click on numbered list. And the list of major projects I'm going to put into a bulleted list, so I simply select the list and then click on the bulleted list option there. So there we have it. We have now told Microsoft Word what category each of our texts belongs to, whether it's a title, section, subsection, or just normal text. The advantage to doing this is that if we do not like the default style, we can easily change the look of a whole document in just a couple of clicks. To do so, click Change Styles and then Style Set. This allows us to use different built-in style sets to the default option. Each set will affect all aspects of appearance, including fonts, headings, colors, paragraph spacing, etc. However, we're just going to continue using the default option, which is Word 2010. If we want to continue using our chosen style set, but we want to change just one aspect of that set, then we can do that in the following way. Click Change Styles, and to change only the color, click Colors. And then you can change the color scheme from this menu. I'm going to change the color scheme to this document to Aspect. We can also change only the font type in the same way. We click Change Styles, Fonts. And we can change the font type away from Calibri if we want to do that but I'm going to stick with Calibri for this document. And finally, we can also change the paragraphs and spacing options here. I'm going to switch this document to double spacing because that's a frequent requirement for university work. Overall, the document now looks very different 
and is consistently formatted throughout. We can also modify only, say, Heading 2. By selecting Heading 2, right-clicking on Heading 2 and selecting Modify. Here we can change all aspects of the appearance of Heading 2, the font type, the colour, the size, etc. And those changes will apply to all of the subheadings throughout the entire document. So if I make some changes here, change the colour, make it look a little bit different, you can see that the subheadings have now changed throughout the document. Okay, so we have now made a number of modifications to the style set. We have changed the colours, we have changed the paragraph spacing, and we have changed the appearance of subheadings. To save these changes so they can easily be used again, click Change Styles, Style Set, and then Save as Quick Style Set. I am going to call these changes Manchester. Now Manchester will appear in the list of style sets. Another advantage to using styles is that it makes generating a contents table very quick and easy. Simply click at the top of a document, insert a page break, like so, And then and then click references, table of contents, and you can automatically generate a table of contents. Here I choose table two. Now move up and you can see that the table of contents is automatically generated in the same style as the rest of the document with the correct page numbers and sections and subsections listed. If you make further alterations to your Word document after generating the table of contents, it may become out of date, so you will need to click Update Table of Contents there. Finally, we can insert a cover page. Simply click Insert Cover Page and then there's a number of automatically generated cover pages which can be inserted. Here I click Tiles. You can see you can fill in a company name, type the document title, type the document subtitle, put in a year, type a company address, etc. Note that the colour, font, etc. of the title page will conform to the overall choices we have made using styles. For example, if we go back to change styles, colours, and then try different colour schemes, they will also change the colour of the title page. And that concludes this presentation on using styles in Microsoft Word 2010.